Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. First off, I want to say a huge thank you for all of you, uh, you know, for all the positive feedback I got on my solo run with the assault class on ruthless difficulty. A lot of you guys dropped uh, in the comments on YouTube and even on Reddit asking about the build I was using. So that's exactly where, what we are going to do um, today. Uh, this video is for you guys who asked for it, so thank you again for the support. By the way, if you haven't watched the video already, I will leave it the, the link to the video down in the description below, or it will be hovering on the screen right now somewhere. Alright, so now I know there has been some talk about the Assault class is just okay, or decent, compared to other classes like Vanguard, Tactical, or Heavy. But let's just clear that up right away. Those classes might seem better. But that's just because they're kind of broken right now, not because the assault class is weak. So let me tell you why they're broken. For example, let's talk about the melter rifle, right? All the other classes can use it and it's crazy overpowered. Instead of just recovering contested HP, this thing is healing you from low HP like it's nothing. It's healing you from low to full, right? If you're using the melter and then you think the other classes feel stronger, well, you're really just benefiting from a broken weapon right now and a broken mechanic which is unintended. So play without that crutch and you'll see Assault holds its own just fine. All right, now, then there's this tactical class, right? People hype it up because it has access to the underbarrel grenade launcher. Honestly, that thing is sterilizing the game just as much. The sheer damage output and the ease of use makes tactical fear broken too. But again, take that away and the balance shifts back to where the Assault class really shines. Now, about the Sniper class, don't even get me started on that. That bug that just gives you infinite ammo with the Sniper rifles, and, you know, that can really skew how people view the class. Oh, and let's talk about the Invisibility, right? Probably the most OP ability in the game right now. But it's working as intended, so we just have to roll with it, you know. Next up, same goes for Bulwark. Great perks right out of the gate and super easy to use and get into because of the shield. I've heard a lot of good things about it and yeah, I agree that it's very well-rounded class, but just because Bulwark is solid doesn't mean Assault is weak. It's, it just plays differently. So back to my solo run. While I got a lot of positive feedback as expected and got some negative comments too, people were saying that Assault is decent, but the other classes can do the same thing and they're way easier to use. Well, fair enough, fair enough. But that's only true if you're leaning on broken weapons or abilities. Without those, Assault is just as strong, if not stronger, in the right hands. Okay, and another thing you need to consider is the enemy type. Chaos versus, you know, Tyranids. So, another bit of feedback I saw was, Okay, Assault is good against Tyranids, but try doing the same against Chaos enemies. And yeah, I get it. Chaos is harder right now. No doubt about it. But they've got weaknesses. Tyranids don't. So, their attacks are slower, they have range, but you can use cover, and you can close the gap. And once you close the gap, they go into melee combat, which, again, they're slow in it. So, uh, also, the heretic humans, you know, the, the cultists, honestly, they drop like flies once you get in their face. Like, you just can't run over them. Um, Chaos Marines, sure, they're tough, but they can be staggered. And with a bit of practice, they become way more manageable, to be honest. Like, 1v1's not even a problem with them. Alright, now that's we, that, that we've addressed all the things we needed to, uh, let's get into the build and the build that I used in my solo run. So, this is the breakdown a lot of you guys were asking for in the comments on Reddit and here. So, here it is. Okay, so let's quickly jump into the build and I will try make it as much summarized as I can and as quick as I can. So I will not be just going through the perks that I'm using, but I will also let you know the reason, the thought process behind the perks that I'm using, um, comparing with the other perks that we have. So starting up with the class starting perk, people pay attention to the abilities, yes, but I don't know if people are paying attention to the starting perks. So perfect dodge timing increases by 50%. Now, you know, the way the combat plays out in this game is you get your blue indicators for the enemy attacks, which are, you know, you can parry them. And you get your red indicators, which you have to dodge. So every other class gets a certain window to dodge those red attacks. But this class, Assault, gets 50% increased duration. So it's a bit more forgiving. That itself, I think, is one of the biggest selling points for you. So the first one in the core perk, you have Winged Fury. Damage from melee attacks executed while sprinting or dashing increases by 25%. Now, the way I play with Assault, if I'm using the hammer, is you uh, sprint towards an enemy and you open up with a pommel smash. 
uh, which is while you're sprinting, if you press the melee button, you do a pommel smash. So that is going to give me 25% more damage. And the reason I use the pommel smash is because when you're sprinting and you do a pommel smash, it staggers the enemies. It stuns them for a good second. So that gives me another window to do a charged attack, do lots of damage. But compare that to the next perk. Damage of charged attacks increases by 15%. Now, we can't have them both, which is a shame. But con comparing the third one is non-finisher gun strikes also restore armor. Now, do you want more damage for this or do you want more survivability? Since as an assault class, we are not the back line, right? We are not a support class. We're not going to sit, sit at, the, at the back and cover the team. We are going to be in the heat of the battle. We are going to be neck deep and we are the front line, right? So this is your bread and butter. Non-finisher gun strikes also restore armor. Like, you do a couple of combos, you kill a couple of enemies, and you keep an eye out on your armor. So, whenever you lose, like, your armor bars, you try and find a way to get your armor back so you can sustain more and you can fight for longer, right? Now, the best and the easiest way to get the gun strikes is dodge or sprint or dive and do a pommel smash on any minoris enemy. That will give you an instant gun strike. So, you can keep replenishing your armor over and over again. Second tree. Auxiliary Arsenal. Secondary da uh, weapons damage increased by 15%. Now, the reason I'm taking this is because you have your melee covered. You have your AoE covered by your grenades and the uh, the ground pound ability. And since we are making this a ground pound build. So, the one thing you're lacking is, especially if you're playing against Tyranids, um, and you have Zoanthropes or Neurothropes, people complain that they're way too tanky, very hard to deal with, and the biggest concern is ammo economy. You run out of ammo very fast. Now, you can take perks for the weapon and all that and get more ammo, but your time to kill doesn't change th through ammo itself. So what I'm doing is, A, if you, take, if you have more damage per shot, your time to kill will decrease you'll take less time to kill an enemy, right? So my TTK will be faster with this perk. Also, B, which means like I'm doing more damage per bullet, my ammo economy by itself increases. It's, it becomes better. Uh, compare that to Retribution. After you are grabbed or knocked back, you deal 15% more damage for 10 seconds. Now, melee, I think we will get it covered by other perks. So I don't think we need this perk really over this one. Uh, killing 15 enemies in rapid succession restores equipment charge by one. Cooldown is 180 seconds. So, that's the thing. Um, you have your AoE covered by, you get, you know, enough grenades on, on the map, I guess. As well as you have your ground pound, which you can spam. T again, my concern is the ranged enemies, the Zoanthropes, the Neurothropes, all that. So, I think this is way better compared to this. Uh, third tree. While performing charge attacks, you do not lose control upon taking heavy hits and you cannot be knocked back. Very cool on paper. I still need to test it a bit more. But I think that's going to build bad habits because you can't get knocked back. You can't get staggered. You will lose a bunch of HP, a bunch of armor. First, if you can try survive without this and then use this, it will be more rewarding, I would say. Because then you know that you can get staggered and you need to be constantly on the move and be very agile and, you know, dynamic. So that's why I'm not using this right now, because again, it will build bad habits. Uh, melee damage is melee damage increased by 15% against Majoris or extremist level enemies. The other enemies basically require AOE, the minoris enemies, and you have that covered with your grenades and ground pound. 1v1s is where you're going to get executions and get the most contested HP and get the, the most armor and everything, right? And you get those iframes or invincibility while you're performing an execution. So your 1v1 damage needs to be on point. That's why I'm taking this. Act of Attrition. Enemies hit by melee attacks take 10% more damage. I tried this, but I don't think this perk is better compared to this because, like I said, AoE is required for Minoris, which you have through your Ground Pounder and Grenades, so I'm not lacking with that. But that 10% feels very lackluster, or lackluster for the Majorius or the Extremis. Now for the team perks. Um, squad Cohesion. All squad members' ability recharge 10% faster. Again, I did a solo. Fine. I don't enjoy doing solo runs. To be honest, as a challenge, yes, but I prefer taking on a challenge as a team than solo because I get claustrophobic or whatever. I, I just don't like doing solos. Not because it's hard or anything, it's just I feel anxious. That's just me, okay? So even if you're doing solo runs, 
on Ruthless, you know, you, you know those moments where you're like, bro, I was so close. If only I had one more second to get my ability recharged, you know, to get my ability recharged faster, and I would have made it out alive. This is what's going to happen. So 10% on paper sounds like two to three seconds, right? Or four seconds at the most. Still very clutch. But in a full squad, that means 30% more recharge for all the teammates. All squad members deal 20% more melee damage against terminus level enemies. The terminus enemies are basically any enemy with a health bar. So I think 20% more damage just for them compared to this, which is going to give you cooldown throughout the whole thing. Uh, I don't know. Decide for yourself. All squad members deal 50% more gun strike damage. Now, this could be very good and useful. And I think if you don't want to take this, definitely take this. But I wasn't using it, and I was doing perfectly fine. Um, moving to the gear. So, Smiting Angel. Ground Pounds damage increased by 10%. Very straightforward. 10% more uh, damage for the Ground Pound. Why does it matter? We'll talk about it uh, up ahead. Comparing that to Hammer of Wrath. After a ground pound, you do not lose control upon taking heavy hits and you cannot be knocked back for 10 seconds. Can give you invincibility at least to getting staggered or stunned and you can do your thing. But since we already know on Ruthless, if you are getting knocked back and staggered, that means you're not playing it right. And if it's happen happening too often or you just can't play around it, that means <laughs> this build video is, you know, it's not going to do anything for you. Um... Ground Pound deals 100% more damage, but its radius is reduced by 50%. That 50% radius hits you like a truck. That's a huge reduction in radius. And, you know, well, talking about the the upcoming perks, you'll know why. Um, jump Pack Dash damages enemies along its trajectory. Sounds very cool. My first instinct was to use this perk, but I didn't see it doing a lot. And until and unless we get those, um, uh, the Sparring Arena... I cannot test it by the number, so it's very hard to say if it's really effective or not. Uh, maneuverability is basically jump pack recharge 20% faster. So throughout the mission, whatever the duration of an operation is, you will have 20% recharge uh, back to back. Very straightforward, very simple. But things get interesting with Zealous Blow. A ground pound kill restores jump packs charge by 10%. Now. A ground pound kill. That means any single enemy is going to give you 10% charge back. So imagine you're surrounded by a lot of enemies. And because you have 10% more damage. And you're using this one as well, Diligence. Which is a fully prepared ground pound deals 20% more damage. But preparation time increases by 25%. So that means a ground pound is guaranteed going to kill enemies within its radius. That means shit ton of enemies killed. That means a ground pound kill basically keeps restoring your jump pack. You can spam the shit out of it. Alright? So that's why we're not taking the dashes for the little bit, um, you know, damage. We're not take, taking the recharge because we can, why take 20% flat recharge when you can recharge it if you play smart? Now, uh, for finisher, ground pound deals 25% more damage for 10 seconds. Again, over this, I don't feel this is worth it. And we already spoke about diligence. So, Aerial Grace. After a perfectly timed dodge using a jump pack dash, you deal 25% more damage for 5 seconds. I don't know about you guys, but I play with friends, and sometimes your latency and your ping is not going to be on spot. And sometimes the movement itself feels, feels a little bit janky, so there's a, you know, all or nothing kind of thing here. And since, again, we're using the ground pound spam, we're not going to be concerned about this. Finally, to finish it off, Signature. Any use of jump pack reloads the equip range weapon. I don't find any issues with that you know, my current build, so I'm not going to go with this. Jump Pack Leap deals damage to all enemies in the takeoff area. Now, 10% more damage, dealing damage from here without any numbers. I don't know why developers do this. Just give us some numbers to work with. 25% um, more damage, 20% uh, more damage can basically, again, make you abuse Zealous Blow. And finally, a perfectly timed dodge using a jump pack dash restores uh, jump packs ability recharge. Again, perfectly timed dodge. It's a hit or a miss. Why would I rely on this well, I, when I can just, you know, bring death from above again and again? So with that being said, I hope you guys like this build. 
So yeah, that's the build and that's my take on the assault class. If you're still on the fence about it, give it a try. Just don't rely on broken weapons or abilities and see how it holds up. And um, if you've got any other questions or thoughts, drop them in the comments down below. And as always, thank you for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one.